Um, hey everyone, this is Dr. Omindi again. So we continue with our series of um, the tissues in the body. So the second one we are going to discuss is the muscle tissue. So um, these are going to be the learning objectives, the three types of muscles and their organizations generally. So muscles mainly um, subserve the functions of body movements, they help to maintain posture, help in respiration like the diaphragm and the intercostal uh, muscles. They help in communication, okay, like the facial uh, muscles of facial expression and the tongue. And then constriction of organs and vessels like peristalsis in the GIT and vessel constriction of um, blood vessels and pupils. Then there's the contraction of the heart for the heartbeats and muscles. From the action, they get to help to produce body heat that helps in the thermal. Um, genesis. So muscles have four properties. They are excitable. They respond to stimulus. They are contractile. They are able to generate and cause a pulling force. They are extensible. Therefore, they stretch and they are elastic. Therefore, they are able to recoil to original resting length. So we have three types of muscle, uh, uh, two types of muscles, striated and non-striated. So for the striated type, we have skeletal and cardiac muscle. Striation is caused by regular arrangement of the contractile units. In this case, the actin, myosin, um, tropomyosin, and so on and so forth. And smooth muscles are non-striated. So muscle is usually covered by connective tissue. So that divides the muscle um, into different parts. And this connective tissue of muscle, we have the epimesium, perimesium, and endomesium. Epimesium uh, covers the entire muscle, okay? So it covers the entire muscle and separates it from the surrounding tissues and organs. So, and usually the epimesium is connected to the deep fascia. Then we have perimesium. Perimesium surrounds a group of muscle fibers, which we call a fascicle. And within the perimesium, you find blood vessels and nerves. So perimesium is for a muscle bundle. Epimesium is for the whole muscle group. And then endomesium covers an individual muscle fiber. The tiny muscle fiber by itself, single fiber, is covered by endomesium. A group of these fibers, the fascicles, are covered by perimesium. And the whole muscle group is covered by epimesium. So we have these three types. And usually the collagen, the uh, the end of a muscle, they can form a tendon or a flattened portion, which we call aponeurosis. So this just shows you this single muscle fiber is covered by endomesium. This whole group of muscle fiber is a fascicle, is covered by perimesium. And the whole muscle the connective tissue is the epimesium that covers it. So we go to the features of skeletal muscle. We've said it's a striated type of muscle, okay? And it contains neurovascular structures. Every other muscle contains neurovascular structures. And so how do you describe a skeletal muscle cell? You can appreciate the striations, these lines, okay? So you have striations, a regular arrangement of contractile uh, fibers. You can see they are cylindrical in shape. So this is one cell, it's cylindrical, and each cell is multinucleated, more than one nuclear. This is one cell, muscle fiber cell of a skeletal muscle. So cylindrical in shape, striated, multinucleated, and the nuclei are located at the periphery of the muscle fiber. Then... The skeletal muscle usually has a cell membrane like any other cell, and the cell membrane of muscle is called sarcolemma. Cytoplasm of muscle fiber is called a sarcoplasm. Okay, then we have what you call um, organelles within the cell, within the sarcoplasm, and we also have oxygen binding proteins in muscles, which we call the myoglobulin. Now we have openings of this uh, we, um, muscle which you call the transverse tubules and these openings they extend into the sarcoplasm which is the cytoplasm at right angles and then which myofibrils which myofibrils are within a muscle fiber these are what you call the myofilaments actin which are thin filaments and myosin which are thick filaments the sarcoplasmic reticulum is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in muscle. Remember, you did a cell and the organelles. So a smooth endoplasmic reticulum in muscle is a sarcoplasmic reticulum. It runs longitudinally and surrounds each myofibril. So usually, it forms a chamber with a T-tubule, and together, a single T-tubule 
and two terminal cistern form a triad. So skeletal muscles have triads. A single T tubule, okay, a single T tubule, which is um, uh, on either side of a terminal cistern, yeah. So a single T tubule and two terminal cistern will form a triad. Sarcoplasmic reticulum store calcium, and by now you know that you need calcium for the muscle to be able to contract. So this is what we mean. This is a muscle fiber. This yellow is the T tubule, and these are the the cisterns. Okay, so you form your your triad. Okay, so terminal cisterns. These two blue are terminal cisterns. Okay, and they are the end portions of a sarcoplasmic reticulum. So these are the tubules of a sarcoplasmic reticulum, and at the end they expand to form cisterns. Two cisterns with a T tubule at the center will form a triad. This is a skeletal muscle, it's triated, it is cylindrical in shape, multinucleated, and the nuclei located at the at the periphery. So you need to appreciate the A bands, I bands, Z lines, and H zones. Okay. Again, this is skeletal muscle. So when you see a slide like this, this is skeletal muscle, multinucleated. So one, this is endomesium, then this covering a fascicle is perimesium, and the whole muscle is covered by by epimesium. So these are the neurovascular structures, blood vessels. This is corrective tissue, most likely perimesium, and these are the muscle uh, cells. Again, so in this you you are able to appreciate the parts of a skeletal uh, muscle under an electron microscope. Okay, so you have um, the contractile unit, so you have structures between two Z lines. So this is a Z line, this is a Z line. Okay, then a Z line is um, a midpoint of the I band, and I band contains only um, the thin filaments. Remember, we said thin filaments are actin. Okay, so from our previous, um, um, previous, let me go to. Yeah, sorry for that. So our thin filaments are the actin and thick filaments are the myosin. So back to this, you get to appreciate that um, these thin filaments, these red ones, okay, these are actin, these are myosin. So where you have only thin filament is actin, is the I band. Midline of I band is a Z line. Where you have only thick filaments, just here where you have only thick filaments is the H zone. But the A band is a region where you have interdigitation of I band and and uh, sorry interdigitation of thick and thin filaments. So that's an A band. Okay. So I band, thin filaments, and the midline of it is Z line. Only thick filaments in H zone. Then where you have interdigitation. So usually during contraction, you have these thin filaments will come up uh, close to each other. So this region where you have both is. A band and within it the portion of only thick bands during relaxation is the H zone okay so other structural proteins apart from actin and myosin you will see the desmin so the desmin is around the Z line vimentin at the Z line you'll see myomesin actinin dystrophin so all these are the structural proteins in skeletal muscle so this is an um, electron microscopic feature of skeletal muscle this is a, a, a triad where you have a cistern of a sarcoplasmic reticulum or smooth endoplasmic reticulum and a t tubule at the center so you form a triad this is a t tubule this is your sarcoplasmic reticulum okay and you can appreciate the Z line, okay, the midpoint of only the, the thin filaments. You can appreciate the H zone where you only have the thick filaments. And the region where you have interdigitation of both will now be your, your, your A zone. A zone has uh, area where contraction occurs, so both thick and thin, it extends, and in the center, there's an H zone where only um, thick filaments exist during relaxation. This is your I band with only thin filaments. Okay. So this just shows you how skeletal muscle contracts. Okay. So you can see the interdigitation of thick and thin filaments. So that's what happens. So we have what you call a motor unit. A motor unit is a neuron and all its muscle fibers it supplies. Okay. So muscles with fine movement have small motor units like the fingers and the eyes. But big muscles for the thighs and the hips, they have larger motor units. So this is just a single muscle fiber and all the muscles it innervates. So that's a motor unit.
we go to cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscles are striated. They are self-excitatory. Okay, so you cannot control. They are regulated by the autonomic nervous system. So they are striated and they have one or two nuclei. They have numerous mitochondria. Their fibers are branched and they have the presence of intercalated discs. And they also have a sarcoplasmic reticulum and together with a T-tubule, they form dyads. So in this case, it's just one sarcoplasmic and one T-tubule to form dyads. It's not a triad, okay? So there are no terminal systems. It's just the sarcoplasmic reticulum and T-tubule. In skeletal muscle, it was the terminal ends of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the terminal systems, two of them, and a T-tubule to form a triad. But here, it's a sarcoplasmic reticulum and T-tubule to form a dyad, okay? But these T-tubules are larger. So cardiac muscle, you have branched cells. The cells are branched with one or two nuclei. The nuclei are centrally located. The cells are striated with presence of intercalated discs. And they have numerous mitochondria and presence of di dias, which are sarcoplasmic, reticulum, and T-tubule. So the... The cardiac muscles, um, of course, in the heart, they're located in the heart only, so we call it myocardia, okay? And each cell, we've said, has one or two nuclei, most of the time one nuclei that is centrally located, the presence of intercalated discs. We can ask you, what are the two composites of the intercalated discs, the components, the desmosomes and the gap junctions? In these ones, they usually allow excitation in one fiber to spread very quickly to adjoining fibers. So that is the importance of intercalated discs to allow, they have desmosomes and gap junctions to allow excitation from one fiber to spread to the next fibers very fast. So some cells are usually autorhythmic, okay? The cells in the cardiac muscles, they have been specialized to form what we call pacemakers, okay? So this is the cardiac muscle. You can see the cells are branching, so they're not cylindrical like skeletal. So you can see this is one cell, but it branches, presence of Nucleus, centrally located, one nucleus, presence of striations, and these are intercalated discs containing desmosomes and gap junctions to allow spread of information very fast to the adjacent nuclei. And remember we said they have dyads, a sarcoplasmic reticulum and a T-tubule. So you can see the branching of cells, you can appreciate striations, you can appreciate intercalate. So when you see this in your steeplechase, identify the structure, cardiac muscle, why? presence of branched cells with single centrally located nuclei, striations, and intercalated discs, okay? So this is a, shows you the presence of a dyad in cardiac muscle. This is an electron microscope. That's where you can appreciate this. So you have your sarcoplasmic reticulum and a T-tubule giving you a dyad. We go to smooth muscle. What are the features of smooth muscle? The cells are spindle-shaped. You can see fusiform or spindle shape. This is what you call fusiform or spindle shape. They are non-striated. They are no striations. The cells have one nuclei centrally located. Contraction, just like cardiac muscle, is non-voluntary. So you need autonomic control, control by nerves and endocrine system. And of course, where do you find smooth muscle? In the GI, stomach, ileum, jejunum, colon, urogenital organs like the urethra, bladder, and the dermis of the skin, and blood vessels. So that's where we find smooth muscle. Remember we said cardiac muscles are the ones that we find on the heart and skeletal muscles are the ones we find on the limbs mainly and anterior abdominal wall, for example. Okay. So these are the features of identify the structure in your steeple chest. You'll say it's smooth muscle cell because of the presence of fusiform shaped cells, single nuclei, centrally located, absence of striations. Okay. So smooth muscle also has actin and myosin, but it also has intermediate filaments of desmin and vimentin, okay? So vimentin is uh, found in the vascular smooth muscles, okay? So um, this is how you appreciate the smooth muscle in um, electron microscope. So you'll see microtubules, you'll see actin, intermediate filaments, lots of dense bodies, okay? So that is... Uh, so this gives you a summary of the three skeletal muscles, cylindrical, multinucleated nuclei at periphery and they're striated, cardiac, branched, striated, intercalated discs, one nuclei at the center, smooth muscles, spindle shaped, uh, central nuclei, one nuclei at the center, non-striated. So those are the features of the three muscles. Okay, so do muscles regenerate? 
skeletal um, muscles increase in size and number, so they hypertrophy and undergo proliferation. Smooth muscles also do the same, and heart muscles. However, the heart um, 